Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Listen, I'm getting ready to do this video, and I want to warn you ahead of time, this is my disclaimer. Whatever you do, if you are at all sensitive, racially speaking, do not watch this video. It may offend, but that is not my intention. My intention is always reconciliation, understanding, further insight, and sensitivity to all needs. Now, as you get ready to watch this, don't cast judgment and cut the video short. You must watch the whole thing because there are things I say toward the end you won't even know is coming when you're just right in the middle or right at the beginning. Please watch the whole video if you choose to do so. And for those of you who are believers, watch it prayerfully. God will give you further understanding. God bless you. Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I know you have heard about the Texas trial. I know you've heard about what's going on and the injustices that happen in the penal system, the court system, the judicial system. Well, you have to remember there's a higher system that's going on. And all of this is working together for our good. No matter what our perspective, what our view on it, what our opinion of it is, the bottom line is God is still the one in control. Now, before you get too upset, and some of you, before you lose your faith in God for not protecting his own from being killed unjustifiably, remember one thing, Jesus Christ, who has committed no sin, died for all of us, and not all of us except him. He committed no sin. There was never any fault on his part. He died for doing good. So, there is a scripture in the Bible that says, I'm saying this as a source of comfort and to be also an eye-opener for those of us who see things from one end or the other, racially speaking. Number one, this is a thing of good and evil. We can put race on it all we want and we can see the racial evidence. We can see it, it's, it's black and white, it's obvious. But we cannot get caught up in the affairs of this world because God's word says this, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. So when you see a particular people being treated as the butt end, as the getting the crappy end of the stick, as getting the worst of the worst, and another group getting the best of the best, remember what God's word says before you get tied up in knots. The first shall be last. The last shall be first. And when we get to heaven, there's going to be a whole lot of surprises. You watch and see. So now let's get down to what's going on. Many people are upset because of the 10-year sentence. Now, for some of you who don't understand why, see, I'm trying to open the eyes on both sides because I do believe the word when it says we are to be ministers of reconciliation and we are to bring understanding, not just judgment. Listen to this. I applaud the judge for what she did, the, the hugging of the cop. I applaud the brother who openly forgave this woman. They both did what God would have done. Now, listen. Listen, before you get bent out of shape, you have to look at something. Number one, we can treat evil with evil, or we can repay evil with God's way of doing good, which is mercy, love, and compassion. Now, that doesn't mean she doesn't pay for what, she's, what she did, and it doesn't mean it was not intentional. We don't know that. God does. So whatever she's getting away with here, God's got a payday for her. 
if she is truly being honest, she's got mercy waiting for her. If she's not, whatever she doesn't pay here, she will pay on the other side. And also, God knows how to make us pay for stuff right here in the land of the living. Because we have to get some lessons learned, some booty whoopings brought on us for the things we do. Whether they're honest or not, there are consequences above and beyond what man imposes on us. Now, listen to this. When you look at, and I'm trying to open the eyes of your understanding here. For some of you who want to look at this as racial revenge, let me get you off of that real quick. Number one, you're looking at a blonde haired, think about it now, blonde haired, blue eyed or gray eyed, whatever color her eyes are, white woman, young white woman crying through this whole thing. And there has always been sympathy towards that image. Now listen, if, let's flip the script. I want you to see it from another perspective. If your son or your daughter who happens to be white was sitting in their living room eating ice cream and watching a TV show and a black big burly black cop or Latino cop came busting in the door, guns blazing. What kind of sentence would you want for that black cop or that Latino cop? Hmm, what kind of justice would you want? Shoot first, ask questions later. It's called murder. Now, I just want you to see it from the other side. Because no matter what we do in America and how much liberty and how liberal we want to consider ourselves and how all-inclusive we want to call ourselves, individually and collectively, there is always the color line. There's always that thing that sticks in our head. Why? The media shoves it down our throats every moment of the day. So it's something that we can't even run away from. But some of us have gotten the victory over most of that nonsense. Now I want to say this to you. For some of you who think, oh, well, I don't know about all that. Listen. You got a young black man that's, that gets caught selling weed or gets caught selling crack. And what happens? When he gets into the judicial system, they lock him up and throw away the key. He didn't take a life. He didn't kill anybody, didn't rape anybody, didn't kidnap anybody. But what did he get? 20, 25 to life? For something like that. Think about it now. On top of that, you get a person who's got a couple of warrants out. And they're just lousy and handling money. And they didn't handle the warrant. And the warrant is for traffic tickets. Traffic tickets. They can be just as an upstanding citizen as you or I are. But guess what? <laughs> they end up getting treated like a criminal, like a thug, because they happen to be a young black man or a young Latino man. And boy, if they're black and Latino, oh, my, my, my. Yeah, they get raked through the coal when it comes to the judicial system and the penal system. There are men who have never committed a crime other than they didn't pay the court. They didn't commit a crime. They didn't hurt anybody. They didn't pull a gun. They didn't steal anything. But they're up there doing life in a major prison, a high a profile prison, 
where hardened criminals are that will do that person much harm, trust me, through anal rapes and beatings and all kind of mess, they're going to do him a lot of harm. And you toss him to the wolves because he's young, he's black, and or he's Latino. Think about that. Hmm. Hmm. Think about it now. There are cops who have been videotaped shooting a black man unarmed, running away from the cop because he's scared. And when the cop says stop, instead of shooting a warning thing up in the sky, he shoots him right in the back, aiming to kill and does not get penalized. All in the call of duty. Now, Many of you don't understand why there are so many of us who get so angry. Because when you look at the scale, sweetheart, they really are not balanced. They really are not. Face the facts. They are not balanced. But for the grace of God, many of us would be out wreaking havoc and raising all kind of hell. But the Bible says, do not be caught up in the affairs of this world. So we cannot get caught up in hatred. We cannot get caught up in bitterness. That's why I take my hat off to that young man, to his brother, the victim's brother. And yes, he was a victim of murder. I take my hat off to his, to his brother for being willing to forgive, for being courageous enough to say that, having not even spoken to his family. That man has got some serious blessings coming from God. And I pray to God that he heals his heart as quickly as possible. That God removes the pain as quickly as possible. And the anger might that might still linger there. Because he's so willing to forgive. Now, what I say to those of you who think it's inappropriate, number one, God's love is never inappropriate. God's mercy is never inappropriate. God would not have enabled them to show that kind of mercy and love if he did not want that to be seen. If God didn't see that it was warranted. Whether the woman knew what she was doing or not, God knows why. He knows if something happened to her or someone she loved at the hands of a young black man and it caused a line of prejudice. He knows if she's working out of wounding or if she's been brainwashed for most of her life. Like some black, like some white women will actually admit that from the time they grew up, if they saw young black men together, they would want to steer away because they were afraid. Why? Because of the image that they have had implanted, indelibly implanted in their mind. Because they don't know them. They're going by what they've been told. Here's a quick example of brainwashing. Check this out. Here's a little food for thought. I want you to think about, chew on this. Number one, I will not refer to myself and neither should any of you as a minority. I will refer to myself as a black woman. Sure, that's what I am. I'm fine with it. But I will never refer to myself as a minority. That's a psychological seed that germinates inferiority, insecurity, and a lower self-esteem, a lower image of oneself and one's worth. Think about that. See, words are very powerful. And for many of you who don't realize how the verbiage you have chosen to identify segments of society, you choose these things. That makes now, if you look at the racial description, that makes whites a majority 
and blacks, browns, yellows, reds, and whatever else, a minority. No, that's a lie. When you count the world, you chalk up the whole world and you put it all in the same barrel together and you put whites there who have always been the ones of privilege, guess what happens? The whites are truly the minority. Now that's not a put down on whites, even though you may take it as that, having wanted us to accept it as just a matter of fact. No, no. Let me open up the eyes of many. We are not a minority. Nobody is a minority. And that word needs to be kicked out of the racial identifications on applications. So the same way that we think that everything should be, well, you know, you get punished for doing this, you get punished for doing that. The same, listen, you're doing the same thing that other races do when they look at us and assume that we're out to do no good. We're stupid. We're slow. We're not worthy of higher levels of living. It's the same prejudice on the flip side. Prejudice is prejudice. Ugly is ugly. Hate is hate. It's all sin. That's the problem with our country. That's the problem with society. It is sin. Bottom line. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And pride will bring on prejudice in a New York minute. So before any of you, black or white, get on your high horse, have a little talk with the Lord first. Please do that. Don't you sit on the judgment seat and start casting judgment calls and what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. If anything wasn't appropriate, it was not appropriate for Jesus to say, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. If we're going to talk humanly speaking, that doesn't make any sense. How are you going to forgive somebody that's slapping you, spitting on you, mocking you, making fun of you, when all you did was heal? All you did was bless. All you did was feed. You did everything good for the people, and they want to chew you out for doing so. Well, what does that mindset come from? And if you have a mindset that says, oh, well, there's something wrong with the judge. No, the judge was acting out of the love of God. And until you have the love of God in your heart, you will never understand that kind of love. But you sure will want it if your behind gets raked over the coal and you need a rescue. Then you want everybody to understand See, this whole thing is not just this or the other. It's called complicated. And only God understands it all. It's clear as, the, as day before God. So all of you who have all your opinions of what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, and stop calling it racial revenge. People have a right to get angry. They're tired of being hurt. They're tired of being at the low end of the totem pole all over the world, being portrayed as idiots for hundreds of years. And then when people buy into that image and they think that's the truth and they act on it, then you call it racial revenge when somebody gets angry because it's been acted on. So a mother doesn't have the right to be angry because a cop that's been brainwashed down through generations. Think about it. Damage has been done in this country. It's been done all over the world. And yes, as much as you don't want to hear it, blacks are at the bottom of the totem pole. Still, you hear people say, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm putting it all out there now because of the commercials, because of the media, all down through the years from Black Sambo and, and, and Uncle Remus and all of that. 
Black men have been portrayed as lazy, stupid, slovenly. Hey, boss. I mean, come on. And kids have watched that for years and years and years, grew up believing it. They didn't know any black people because we were kept separate. And if a black person knows how to rub two sentences together, you call it talking white. No, it's not talking white. Has nothing to do with white. You criticize Bill Cosby for having the show that he had saying he's misrepresenting a black family, making them look white. No, most of the people in my life that I knew who were black were just like that family. But you don't know because you're not around blacks. So all you know is the Uncle Remus vision. All you know is the black Sambo image. That's all you know. And that's what you live by. But ask God to open your eyes. I don't hold it against you. I understand why you would think that way. Just like back in the day, Native Americans were, were shown on TV as savage. Oh, they rape, they kill, they, 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 they scalp. But what were you doing to their families? Digging a hole, sticking them down, taking baseball bats and sticks and beating them and having fun beating them to a pulp, torturing them, raping their children, raping their women. Come on now. You don't show that side of history. So all the kids grow up black, white, red, polka dot, yellow. All we get to see is the image that was portrayed of the innocent whites that were pilgrimaging into this country. Wow, those nasty savages. Come on now. It's been a brainwashing thing from day one. And everybody has bought into the brainwashing. Everybody has, including blacks. You know why I say including blacks? Because there are blacks that think that white is better. When I was a kid, my sister used to say this. This is more of a human talk than it is a, a, um, a spiritual talk. But no matter what I say, God's ways are on top. And his ways are the central theme. Now listen, when I was a kid, and this is why racial prejudice and racial... Uh, uh, stereotypes came across as so idiotic to me because my older sister who a lot of people thought were Puerto, was Puerto Rican my older sister used to make fun of it and she would say you know people are stupid enough to think this and she would quote the quote the kids were raised hearing if you're white you're right if you're yellow you mellow. If you're brown, stick around. But if you're black, get back. So folks grew up thinking that yellow was mellow, but if their kids came out dark skin, oh no. What? Where did that come from? S stereotype brainwashing. The same thing that makes whites afraid of blacks. The same thing that makes blacks afraid of cops. Not all cops are monsters, you know. There are very loving cops out there that do protect and serve. So let's get rid of all the stereotypes and deal on an individual basis, shall we? And let's be quick to forgive and slow to wrath. The Bible says in Psalms 37, forsake wrath. Get it out of the picture. You don't need that crap. It's poison. It's toxic. Forsake wrath is the quote. And some of you refuse to forsake it. You like the wrath being there to fuel your fire because your fire has reason for vengeance. Your fire, you, I mean, come on now. On both sides, and I'm talking white and black, both y'all got vengeance in your hearts. Not all of you, but sadly, too many of you. 
have vengeance in your heart. And it's not racial vengeance. It's just human sinful tendencies to be vengeful. That's why God's word says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. But you don't want to wait for God. But you don't know what kind of price people have to pay. You want to handle it yourself because in your mind, he ain't doing nothing. Okay. You keep on thinking that way. You're going to miss out on a lot of good in your life as long as you're bent on payback. As long as you're bent on resentment, bitterness, anger, hate, stirring the pot, getting everybody's hearts all fired up so they can fight your purpose, your agenda. Some of you just like keeping mess stirred up. When are we going to get to the point where we drop all these little racial barriers in the first place? We are no more than a been a bouquet of roses, red roses, white roses, yellow roses, black roses, blue roses, purple roses, two-tone roses, pink and white, black and white, blue and, and yellow. Come on. Every one of them is a rose and they all smell the same. Now, how stupid would it be if the rose could articulate its feelings and the red roses hated the yellow roses and the yellow roses stayed away from the white roses and the white roses re re recoiled from the blue roses. Think about how stupid that would be. They are all the same flower, the same species, the same family. They all have thorns. They all have leaves on their stems. That's how ridiculous it is that we should be pointing the finger from race to race to race to race. Get that stupid sin out of your life. Turn your heart over to the Lord. I applaud the judge. She led that woman to Jesus. That's what that hug was about. That woman accepted the Lord Jesus in her heart. When was the last time any of you led somebody to the Lord? Now I'm going to leave it at that. As the Bible says, Selah, think on that for a minute. 